I remember doing a video on this thing ages ago, and it kind of stuck with me because I've always wondered what the precursors were, who they were, what they did, and what they look like. I've been doing some research as well, and I've been trying to learn more about these guys because the precursors played such a massive part in Subnautica's story. I mean, they made this. And we really don't know much about what they look like or if they're even still around. Now, there is data to suggest they are still around, but I want to dedicate a video to the background of Subnautica. Not the cure, not the emperor, not anything else in the foreground. What's the silhouette behind everything else? I want to find out more about the precursors. And now you're going to learn a lot about them because I said so. Welcome back to Subnautica. The first thing I want to do is we're going to scan this right here because it has something to do with the precursor. So let's go ahead, the alien statue. So what is the alien statue? We do know right off the bat, it is from the precursor home world. This artifact is unpowered, suggesting it served a ceremonial rather than practical purpose. The pyramid resembles vines spiraling upwards towards the warm blue stone mounted above it. It may represent a plant found on the alien's home world, a building of religious import, or even the gravitational pull of their home solar system. So is the precursor home filled with these? Are these plants found on the alien home world? Do they have crystals? Do they have, maybe they have a different material there that allows them to create such sophisticated technology that we just don't have access to. Maybe they have more elements than what we have access to. Now I'm going to reference the wiki a lot in this video, so I hope you guys are ready for a ride. The Precursor Race was a highly advanced and ancient space-faring alien race that arrived on planet 4546B approximately 1,000 years ago, searching for a cure for the Kara bacterium. Most information surrounding them is currently unknown. The ulterior motive of the Precursors was to stop the Kara bacterium from destroying their race which was a bacterium that they discovered on an unknown planet. Their plans failed, and the Kara was released onto planet 4546b. It seems that this was the main cause of the death of the Precursors. No Precursor has ever been seen, so nothing is known of their physical appearance. It is likely that they were a lot larger than humans based on the size of their bases and objects within them. A prime example being the height of the surgical table found in the diseased research facility, which comes up just below Riley Robinson's neck. For use as a surgical table, they would likely be around the same height as the surgeon's waist. By this, we can estimate that the precursor race would have averaged between seven and eight feet in height. They are known to have had an extremely long lifespan, as evidenced in a data bank entry by the mention of a 96-year-old precursor being considered very young. The same individual was near 700 Earth years old, born 1708 Earth years ago, when its body became infected after the Kara outbreak and the consciousness was stored in a data hub. Now, I do want to reference one thing here, when you sh when these guys stored their consciousness in a data hub it was kind of like a medically induced coma more or less they uploaded their consciousness to a i guess separate platform and um, i don't know what they're going to do from there maybe they had the technology to transplant a mind into another body or maybe they replicated bodies because they did make warpers and warpers are uh, pretty sophisticated so i would imagine that to continue on their lives they would be able to download that said consciousness into a new body. The use of the word seed in reference to the unborn form of a precursor possibly implies plant-like biology, though it is equally possible that seed could refer to an animal ovum. Imperfect translation may also be the reason behind this. The language clearly does not perfectly translate into English as shown by the naming of the Sea Emperor Leviathan. Though this theory of plant-like biology is not supported by the fact that no flora species in the game appears to be visibly affected by Kara, and the deactivation terminal in the quarantine enforcement platform takes a blood test. The precursors are known to have scavenged technology from other races, 
All but one of the relics held by them were taken from other races. Some of these races even more ancient than themselves. One of the relics is a sword from Earth showing that the precursors visited the planet and possibly even made contact with humans at some point. Inside the Sparts Reef Sanctuary, the PDA notes similarities between precursor architecture and old Earth religious iconography. This may be a coincidence. However, it may indicate that the precursors had an influence on the formation of ancient human religions and societies. If this is true, then it is likely that some ancient Earth languages were based on the language of the precursors. The PDA is capable of translating it without ever having encountered the language before. If the language was from a language family completely foreign to any Earth, then translation should be impossible. Their written language bears similarities to Hebrew. Their language can be heard from the deactivation terminal within the quarantine enforcement platform after Riley attempts to disable. And after he successfully disables, the PDA is able to translate the former. Although precursors are not seen in game, they are an extremely advanced race, able to create advanced technology such as teleportation devices, weapons capable of bringing down large ships, and most notably the weapon or artifact that they have that can destroy an entire solar system, I believe it was, and the digital equivalent of medically induced comas. There is only evidence of a single precursor doing this, who was uploaded to the Dune Sanctuary with their body disposed of shortly afterwards. The precursors were able to create and use warpers as guards for their bases and use them to hunt down creatures infected with the Karar bacterium and create technologies far more advanced than humanity's current technological state, at the same time predating humans by thousands of years. The precursors were also able to create quote-unquote keys known as alien tablets which unlock various precursor machines including force fields and alien arches which function as teleporters the artifacts also possibly served as a personal computer and security clearance of sorts to which user according to the entry for the blue tablet in addition they can create alloys that are highly heat resistant and can last over 1,000 years with no sign of degradation. Ion cubes are another creation, having been created from an unknown element not found on the periodic table. Therefore, my idea, because I didn't know this beforehand, but my idea that they may have, I guess, substances that are not on our peri periodic table, which enables them to go a step further and have their technology advance faster and further than our current technology. Most, if not all, precursor technology is seemingly powered by ion cubes. Interestingly though, ion cubes used in ceremonial fashion, as the three sanctuary caches have multiple ion cubes adorning them. The precursors also created the alien robots that repair and, if needed, defend the alien bases from intruders. Around a thousand years ago, after exploring a planet for routine expansion, the precursors came across the Karar bacterium and most likely discovering its lethality and indirectly causing it to infect their species, go to various planets in order to develop a cure. One of the outposts that were set up was 4546B. And there, the precursors installed the diseased research facility, alien thermal plant and quarantine enforcement platform to assist them in their research. The diseased research facility serving as a means to test the bacterium on native creatures and to construct and repair the enforcers, the warper. The aforementioned creature was a biomechanical creation of the precursors having taken a creature and augmented it. Their purpose was to keep the bacterium spread to a minimum during the construction of this facility. It is likely the precursors discovered the gargantuan fossil and the ancient skeleton with the precursors setting up a laboratory near the remains of the latter. And actually you guys know about the gargantuan fossil. I had this thing recreated by Tapwing a while ago and you guys actually loved the idea of this thing being alive and well in the game and how it may have looked. But thankfully, Tapwing did an outstanding job on that. 
The alien thermal plant served to power the remaining precursor bases. The precursors had discovered 4546B's natural thermal energy and installed the plant within the lava castle as a means of utilizing it. The quarantine enforcement platform was constructed to prevent any unauthorized ship from landing or leaving among the bases. The precursors built three sanctuary caches in the deep sparse reef, northern blood kelp zone, and inside a meteor crash crater within the dunes. These caches served as a failsafe should the bacterium be unleashed onto the planet. Inside the caches, the precursors installed data hubs as a means of keeping them alive when their physical body could no longer be used. The precursors are still alive in a sense with us. They're still here, though their physical forms are no longer here, obviously. They've, they've passed on, unfortunately, but they do have a consciousness to some degree. Whether or not they realize their state in those terminals, I'm not too sure. After testing on multiple creatures, the precursors discovered the Sea Emperor Leviathan species is immune due to a unique enzyme it produces, dubbed Enzyme 42. The precursors then constructed a fourth base, the primary containment facility in the lava lakes, in close proximity to the alien thermal plant for the sole purpose of containing a Sea Emperor Leviathan. They then managed to obtain one along with its seven eggs and somehow managed to put it inside the facility's aquarium. However, it is revealed to them that their captive is too old to produce a stable variant of the enzyme, the creature only capable of causing temporary effects. The precursors then turn to its eggs, deducing that the unborn would be a stronger source of the cure. However, they could not figure out how to make the eggs hatch. The precursors then took one of the eggs and dissected it, although this resulted in the death of the fetus. The parents of the eggs tried to communicate with the precursors, attempting to tell them that its children could not be forced from their eggs, and they must hatch when ready. However, Sea Emperor Leviathan explains to Riley that the precursors could not hear its pleas, and took another egg and put it in the facility's egg lab. Despite their best efforts to minimize the bacterium spread, it is unsuccessful, and the Karar rapidly infects 4546B. Facing extinction and unable to make the Sea Emperor Leviathan eggs hatch, the precursors decide to preserve their consciousness in data hubs. Although there is only evidence of a single precursor doing this, it can be assumed that the precursors went extinct with only their research and structures to be found in the future. And then that leads us obviously to the point we are in the game right now where we have to cure the planet, more or less. There is some trivia. Various data downloads suggest the precursors may be capable of some form of telepathy, like the Sea Emperor, basically, and what they do when they talk to us in our mind. Well, not in our mind, but like to the PDA we have, and then the PDA translates to us in a speaker. The ancient Mongolian blade found in the antechamber of the primary containment facility suggests that the precursors visited Earth in the past. The alien carving also supports this theory, as the yin and yang symbol was a major part of ancient Chinese philosophy. According to data downloads, the precursors were grown from seeds, suggesting they were plant-based beings. It also suggests that they are raised in broods. Their life cycle also greatly exceeds a century. So these guys are old as hell, and I might be completely and totally off track and wrong in saying this, but I feel like this might be a seed. Maybe this is a seed, or this is the start of a precursor's life Welcome as a creature. Captain. Now, it's so much information to take in because they have so much about them, and there's so much cool lore about the precursors. You guys digest what you can from this. That's the entire backstory of the precursors and everything you need to know about them and what they came from, what they are, what they do, so on and so forth. I still believe that maybe a seed or a representation of a seed and I do believe somewhere within the game, we might be able to find some remnant of a precursor being around. If Subnautica devs have even decided what they want them to look like, we don't know yet. We're not sure what a precursor would look like or how it would interact with a human or if they would just squish us like a bug. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section on today's video of Subnautica. It's different. I know it's more, I guess, information based, but 
I wanted to touch base with the, I guess, lore of the game. I don't want to be out of the loop with this stuff, and it's good that I did a video like this. And I feel like you guys now know a lot more about the precursors as well. Let me know what you think they might have looked like. If you have any fan art that you want to send me on Discord or anything like that, I strongly suggest it because I definitely want to know what the precursors would have looked like. Maybe I'll commission Tapwing to make one if that's something you guys are interested in. Let me know in the comments section anyways. I also want to touch base with this creature right here that you guys see in the thumbnail. Now, I was DM'd on Discord and someone was like, Yo, I found a precursor. I found what they look like. This is how they would have looked. Yada yada. And I don't think they're entirely wrong in saying, you know, this looks like a precursor or this might be what they look like because there is no real interpretation of what a precursor would have looked like. Ultimately, it comes down to, I guess, whatever they decide to officially release. But this is not something that was officially released. This is from a guy called Presley after doing some research. And in 2013, this picture was made. This might be for an entirely different game, to be honest with you. I don't know. But I'm going to clean up. I'm going to clean up the misconception right now before it even gets out there that this is not a precursor i think this in particular is made for fun it was made for fun by presley actually and i don't know if because it's listed under subnautica so don't get me wrong this this was listed under subnautica but it's just something made for fun now who knows if this is what a precursor's head would have looked like maybe back when subnautica was like a very early idea you know super super early not even in prototype type of deal uh, they would have had some ideas for what they wanted to have these things look like. Hell, it could even be conceptual, because we do know that back in 2013, they were making concept stuff. They were doing prototyping for Subnautica. There's various videos on YouTube about it as well. I think as early as 2014, actually. So this isn't entirely bad, I guess. Like, it could technically be something. I think if you search up Subnautica Precursor, you will find this image too eventually as well. But unfortunately, I, I don't believe this is this is it i don't think this is a precursor and if it is well i mean holy crap you know that looks pretty cool but i have a strong suspicion this might be for a different game or conceptual for a different game i don't know you guys let me know what you think down in the comment section section about this too i'm swearing my words damn it I, i've gone through so much reading and so much information today i'm so tired my tongue is just like cramping at this point and i don't even know if it's possible for a tongue to cramp and i probably have people thinking about experiences of that happening to them now because i'm pretty sure anything can cramp and <laughs> Off topic, I know. I love the I love the design of it. I love the idea of it. If this thing is a, a seven to eight foot hulking beast that towers over you and has surgical tools and like multiple arms, multiple hands, you know, yada yada, I would be pretty incredible. And it does look like the type of species that could potentially be very intelligent. And I mean, it would match how we would imagine the alien species to look as well. And it has a sheen kind of like a creature we expect would. At least within Subnautica. I wish it had like some kind of telling sign like the Karar virus or something. Then that would be a dead giveaway. You know, like, hey, well, it's not Subnautica, but it's Subnautica. You know, little little nudge. Maybe they decided they didn't want to show off what this thing would have looked like. I don't know. Too much theorizing. Let me know how accurate my video was. Let me know how accurate the information is on the wiki. What you think happened ultimately to the precursors if they're still around. I think they're still around. Yada, yada, yada. You know all that stuff. I still want to hear back from you guys. And definitely send me some fan art of precursors if you have any idea what you think they might have looked like because there's a lot of speculation and a lot of people wondering what these things would have looked like guys that is it i swear you can go now okay you can leave you can go away video's over you're making it awkward by sticking around you know that right no you just want to hear me ramble i mean i'm not gonna say very much more so Okay. All right. Bye.